Hi, I'm Kronos with a video on an Android app available in the store today called NewDroid. This is a free app, doesn't have any registration requirements, doesn't have any advertisements, and it's actually a cryptocurrency wallet that allows you to store your crypto directly on your phone. But it has two interesting characteristics that I like to touch on in this video. First, it is not a Bitcoin wallet. This is actually a Nubits wallet, which is a different cryptocurrency based around the idea of a stable peg. One Nubits pegged to one US dollar. So if the value of Bitcoin goes up and goes down, the value of your Nubits stays the same at all times. Now this is based on a community-driven mechanism that's a bit experimental, so you shouldn't put more money into this than you can afford to lose. No peg can be 100% guaranteed. But with that in mind, definitely check out the app. The second interesting thing about this app is its deep integration with a service called Shapeshift.io. You may have heard of them. It's a service that allows you to change one kind of cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, Bitcoin into another, such as Litecoin or Nubits, without sending them first to a centralized exchange to trade with other traders. This service acts as an intermediary, so you'd send your Bitcoin directly to them, and they would send your Nubits directly to the third party without any registrations or signups or any of that stuff. So it's very easy to use. I want to demonstrate how that works in the app in this video right now. Let's get started. Here we are looking at the new Droid app, and you can pick this up for free in the App Store, like I mentioned. This is what you'd see when you open the app, and as you can see, I have no new bits at all. If I want to send some, I could use this QR code here or press the Request Coins button. But what I'm going to demonstrate in this video is how to send coins. So let's tap Send Coins. Now we're presented with a very difficult to navigate address box. Nobody likes typing Bitcoin addresses in an address box because they're like 30 letters and numbers and you're guaranteed to type one wrong and have to redo the whole thing. But what I like about this app is that it includes an integrated QR code scanner. So there's the scan button here in the upper right and let's press that. Now, if you don't know what scanning a QR code is, let me demonstrate that right now. This is a Bitcoin address at the block explorer blocker.io, and you can see those squares over there on the right. That is a QR code. It's basically an image representation of the data, of any data, and in this case, it's the data of a public address. So I simply hold my phone up to that, and the camera inside the phone scans the QR code and jumps me back to the pay page. So let me uh, jump back so you can see that. So I held my phone up to that QR code, and you can see it's automatically captured what was stored in it, which was, in this case, a Bitcoin address, starting with 1, 5, etc. Now it's detected that the destination code is Bitcoin, so now I simply choose how many Bitcoins I would like to send. In this case, I'd like to send 0.1 Bitcoins, which at today's exchange rate is about $28. So this is where the app does its mag magic. It has a rate of $286 per Bitcoin which is actually 286 new bits per Bitcoin because of that one-to-one -one peg. Now it tells me exactly how much to pay. My amount to pay is 28.66 new bits. So when I press send here, I am not sending the Bitcoin. I'm sending 28 new bits to the Shapeshift service, and then they turn around immediately and send the 0.1 Bitcoin onto the destination address that I scanned through that QR code. What's neat here is I didn't have to sign up for anything. I didn't have to give any personal information. It just works inside the app, so it's very, very convenient. Now I've just installed this app so you can see I'm missing 28 bit new bits. Basically my wallet doesn't have anything in it so I can't press send. But if I were to send, that's exactly what would happen. Now I want to demonstrate how I could send any type of crypto coin that's supported by the new bits, uh, by the Shapeshift infrastructure. So let's jump back to the browser and go to the Litecoin address that I've pulled up here. This is very, very similar to the Bitcoin address, but as you can see, it starts with an L instead of a 1 because it's a Litecoin address. So I'm going to switch back to my phone, press scan again, and then scan that address. I'll switch back to the browser so you can see me scanning it. Bam! It is very quick. Now we can go back to the phone. So as you can see, that's been loaded directly into the app, and there is the address in the upper right starting with L. It is automatically detected that the destination coin is Litecoin because that L indicates that it's a Litecoin address. Now it's filled in that it's six Litecoins I'd like to spend. That's because that's an equivalent value to the 0.1 Bitcoins I'd already filled in. Uh, but I'm feeling generous. I would like to actually send 10 Bitcoins as well instead. So now it's converted this to 4.71 new bits. This is once again using the Shapeshift service. So if I press next here, it tells me I need to send 47 new bits to the to the uh, destination address inside Shapeshift in order to make this work. Now this is all integrated and automatic. You notice, by the way, a slight difference between this number 7106 
and this number uh, 7120. That's just the difference between the best offer to buy and the best offer to sell Litecoins at any given time. You're going to have a little bit of a spread there, so you're not going to get exactly one-to-one -one correspondence. If you convert your new bits back to Litecoin, Litecoin back to new bits, back to Litecoin, back to new bits, you'll bleed out value slowly over time just because of that little bit of slippage there in the trade. But as long as you keep that in mind, you can just think of it as a small fee that you'd be paying when you convert from one thing to another. So once again, I don't have enough coins for this because I only have zero new bits and I need 47 for this. But if I were able to press send, I would instantly be able to send Litecoin using the new bits in my wallet. So this app is a great way to keep a stable value cryptocurrency while maintaining the flexibility to send many other kinds of crypto. If you have any questions about the app, there's a great page on the New Bits website. I've put a link in the video description that has frequently asked questions, it has a link to the source code, that kind of thing. Now the source is open source, which means anyone can see the source code and verify that it works. As they say, you can even tinker on the inside if you're feeling a little bit technical. Uh, and once again, you can find the app at the Android App Store. Just search for NewDroid, that's N-U-D-R-O-I-D, of course. And I've put a link to the app download in the video description as well. The one last thing, if this is your first time installing a cryptocurrency wallet app on your phone, I would highly recommend the Getting Started video I've put together that's specifically for how to get started with this app. It covers things like setting up a PIN, backing up your wallet, things that you want to do as a first time user just for your own security. So you could jump over to that video in the video description as well. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below the video and I'd be happy to answer them. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.